Today, we're taking a step back from mixed reality to take a look at how to film and stream with avatars using full body tracking. All right, let's get into this. Howdy y'all, my name is Bo. Me and Ani have spent the past year learning everything that we can about how to film and stream in mixed reality. But as fun as mixed reality is, there are some limitations to be able to film the creative shots that we really wanna get. Specifically, the ability to have a free moving camera in virtual space that can be moved anywhere that we want to go without requiring a green screen. There are ways to simulate movement in mixed reality by setting up a track camera using one of these, an HTC Vive tracker. But that's for another time. Drop us a comment if you're interested in seeing how to set up a tracked camera in mixed reality. We may make that in a future video. But for now, let's talk about the requirements to set up full body tracking. There are a few different ways to achieve full body tracking, but let's talk about the hardware that we're using today. For our HMD, we're gonna use the Valve Index, knuckle controllers, three HTC Vive trackers with wrist and waist straps. These are the 2.0s. They did recently announce the 3.0s, but we're not gonna worry about those today. We're also using a set of 2.0 base stations. As far as software goes, we are using Live, which you can pick up at live.tv. You click on the download link. This will take you right to the Steam Store page where you can pick this up. This is a free app that we use for filming mixed reality. We even use their Live Streamer Kit to be able to engage in Twitch chat. And today we're gonna use this for avatars. We're also gonna be setting this up with Beat Saber. Just keep in mind that you'll need the Steam version of Beat Saber for it to work with Live. With Live installed, we can now set up the capture utility by clicking on Launch Capture. This is gonna launch the compositor window that we will be recording as far as the output for our virtual reality. Currently, I have my camera set to Brio with the index, so that is the camera that I'm using with the headset I'm using, but we need to create a new one. So click on Add. And for camera type, we'll select avatar. And we've got an avatar showing on screen there. As far as avatars go, there's a few that come pre-built in with Live, or if you have your own, you can even add them in as well. Live currently supports .avatar and .vrm file extensions. All you have to do is take that file and just drag and drop it anywhere on this window and it'll go ahead and import it right into Live. If for any reason you need to delete or change those avatars, they actually live right here in your PC's document Live Avatars folder. Or you can also create your own avatar online with the utility that Live provides by clicking on this button that says create your avatar online. This will bring you to live.tv forward slash create avatar. Now I've already created an avatar, so it lets me view my avatar. And this is gonna be the avatar that I'm using. You have the ability to customize everything from skin color. There's a few outfits to select, maybe a little bit of business class here. We'll keep it casual though. You can change your hairstyle, hair color, throw on a beard, beard color, same thing for eyes, eyebrows, eyebrow color, some accessories like sunglasses, visors, a little bit of face makeup, or even a couple of hats as well. When you're done, just click on done, and it's gonna say getting your avatar ready, and then it'll provide you with an option to just import directly into Live, or you can copy the link here as well. If you import your avatar directly into Live, there'll be a pop-up that says successfully imported your avatar. You can now select it in VR. Over in our Live Avatars folder, this last file that's created will actually be our new avatar. Now, if you want to set up multiple avatars, I definitely recommend coming in here and changing the name or else you'll get a pop-up just like this one that says the avatar has already been imported. Do you wish to override it? Since me and Adi want our own separate avatars, we chose to name them so we didn't run into this issue. The last thing that we need to do from the PC is to give our profile a name. It defaults to new camera, but I'm gonna call this full body tracking for Beat Saber. And click save. And now it's time to suit up. Steam VR remembers which tracker you use for your waist, left foot, and right foot. So to make sure we don't get mixed up, we labeled our trackers. And here we'll pop it onto our strap. Make sure it's good and tight because if it shifts, it will move your avatar and shift happens. 
and that's no good. As far as setting it up for your feet, you can strap it to your ankles, to your feet, wherever you like, as long as you remember where you put it so you can keep it in that location each time. When the trackers are all in place, go ahead and turn them on. Hold the button for two seconds. The light will turn blue, indicating that it is connecting and green when it's connected. Pairing the Vive trackers is as easy as opening up the Steam VR menu, clicking on devices, clicking on pair controller. I want to pair a different type of controller, selecting the HTC Vive trackers, and then just continuing to follow the on-screen instructions to get you set there. All right, let's get into live and calibrate this thing. We can see that all of our devices are connected and even in VR, we can see that they're showing up. So I've got my waist, my feet, and my hands all set. So now we need to open up the live menu by hovering over the icon until it turns a solid green. And hey, you can see me, we've got the avatar up. There is a few things that I wanna do. Let's select the avatar that I created. There we go, it's showing up. You can also turn on mouth tracking. So under mouth animation, just make sure that Oculus lip sync is turned on and then that'll make your mouth move based off of what it's hearing. Beyond that, the only thing that we're tracking at the moment is just my hands and my head. So we need to turn on waist, feet, and I'm gonna turn on fingers as well. First thing we need to do here is calibrate the T-pose. You can see the solid green circle is the trackers that are currently identified. There is an option to do shoulder tracking as well, but we don't have the additional trackers and we're not gonna do that at the moment. Let's plant our feet on these little green feet here. Make sure that we're good and even. Hold our hands out in a T pose and then pull the triggers. Okay. Basically, we are all set. There's a few things that seem a little bit wonky. You can see my foot is a little bit off to the side. To fix that, we'll hit okay here, but we're gonna edit calibration. And this gives us a view of our avatar and lets us do a little bit of fine tweaking. So let's just adjust the hips just a touch there. Bring that foot in just to make sure that we're not going through the floor. Same thing for left foot. And the hand should be good, but there we go. Much more of a fluid movement. Because I've got the trackers on my ankles and not on my feet, I don't have foot shifting movement. If I was to slide them down on my feet, I'm just shifting it to where the strap is going around my shoe, but staying on top of my foot. Edit the calibration. Bring my feet down just a little bit here. Maybe the waist, where I'm actually on the floor there. And you can see that the tracker is actually right there. So we're just gonna make the avatar match where we actually are. And it's fairly easy to be able to move. Waist is pretty good. Head is in the VR headset. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, so much better. And now I've got ankle tracking. I can move my feet. The toe is kind of sticking up. Oh, and that's what's going on. It actually thinks that the floor is in a slightly different position and it makes me feel like I'm on my tiptoe. So let's come around here, bring the hips down. That helps get the feet right there on the floor. Lift the toes up just a hair. How are we doing? That looks a little bit better. All right. Feeling pretty comfortable there. Okay, okay. Before we start editing the cameras, let's launch Beat Saber so we can get our camera angles just right. Over in Live, we've configured the camera. Now we need to move back over to Capture, select Beat Saber in our drop down list, and sync and launch. We're loaded into Beat Saber, and now we need to adjust our camera to make sure we get it in the exact position that we want it to be. To do this, let's go back to our live menu and select the camera. And the first one that we're currently using is the selfie camera. The selfie camera is pretty neat because you can just click on it, drag it around, and move it anywhere you want to be able to have the camera angle that you want in view. You can even zoom in closer and closer if you wanna get any of those close-up shots, or you can zoom out pretty far as well to get much more of a wide angle shot just like this one. To be able to set up for a Beat Saber song, we'll kick on No Fail, jump into a song, and this way, 
I can take a moment to move the camera angle exactly where I want it. I like the new scoreboard that Beat Saber put in, so let's get an angle that just works right to be able to show that in. How about right about here? Really don't want to block anything either. Maybe a bit more of an angle like that. And let's give this a shot. I really like how with the selfie cam, it's got this subtle shift that makes the camera a little bit fluid where it's moving with you as you're moving around. That was a lot of fun. And the selfie camera works really good for normal maps. But what about 360 maps? Down here, go back to the live menu. This time we're gonna select third person. Now you can see the 360 camera is just moving with me, but it's got a nice little slow kind of roll that works pretty well. It's not too jittery, not too shaky. So let's go ahead and jump into a 360 map and do what we can. I am gonna kick this on no fail though. The third person camera is probably the one I'm most excited about because when it comes to 360 maps for Beat Saber, these are really hard to capture in mixed reality. But with using an avatar like this, the camera is able to rotate around the play space with you. What I don't like is the fact that the pitch is down so much. It's more like it's looking at the floor and you don't see the, uh, the scoreboard or what's going on up top. I haven't quite found a way to really correct that but I'll be looking into it a little bit further and see if there's a way that we can change that. So we talked about selfie mode, which is great for normal Beat Saber maps. And we covered the third person angle, which is great for 360 maps. But there's also one more that really catches my attention, and it's the one for gamepad. This allows you to be able to control the camera using an Xbox 360 controller. With Audi's help, we dive a little bit deeper into this one. Let's do this. To control the camera, we used an Xbox One Elite controller. And this was really cool because we're able to take the camera anywhere in the 360 space of Beat Saber and get these amazing angles and transitions. Possibilities are going to be endless with this tool. Absolutely. The problem is it's gonna take some time to learn how to control the camera. It is very touchy. So we'll, we'll work on this and see what we can come up with. You did a pretty good job. The viewfinder does have the ability to move in different locations. We've got the camera, so wherever the camera is, the viewfinder is gonna be right there. We can set a HUD, so we're gonna have this heads up display that we can see it wherever we move. It's always gonna be in our vision. It works okay, um, but it's not really my preferred, specifically for Beat Saber. There may be some better applications for it, and we'll come back to that when we can. You can also strap it to your wrist. It's kind of a small display, but it's a nice, quick and easy display right there. Or you can pin it to the world. For instance, this star is our pinned version. So if we want the camera to be back here while we're filming, but I wanna be able to see it while I am playing the map, I can bring it up here and be able to see it while I'm playing. Let me go ahead and turn off live and continue. All right, y'all, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video or got any value out of it, show us your appreciation. Slap a like on it. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us a line down in the comments below. You can also reach us over on our brand new Discord and reach us over on Twitch. Chat with us live. We're gonna be testing a lot of this out and figuring it out to see how we can make it a lot better along the way. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you wanna stick around for more and we'll see y'all in the next one.